It's a gospel on the radio talk show. A show about dreams and visions and a church that is indeed triumphant, alive, and well. For the church, triumphant is alive and well. Hello, Tallahassee. This is the Gospel on the Radio talk show. I'm Pastor Jack King. I am your host, and uh, it's always such a wonderful thing to be able to spend a Sunday morning with you here on 94.1, just bringing you the message of the church. As I say, a show about dreams and visions and a church triumphant, alive and well. Our rules, we don't talk sports, politics, doctrine, but we do always spend, speak well of one another. This is show number 1078, and I have in the studio with me return guest. I like return guest. People who come back to see me for a second time. But it's just been too long. It's been four years ago, Adrian and Jerry Hendricks, ministry save one more now. Yes. <laughs> so, Miss so Adrian, what is Save One More Now? Well, Pastor Jack, thank you so much for having us back again. It's wonderful um, to have you here. Thank you. Um, Save One More Now, Incorporated, is a life affirming ministry. Um, and our passion is to see people connected with the Lord God. Um, there is nothing more painful to us and to the Lord than for people that Jesus died for to not go with him, to not be with him. Oh, yeah. So um, we try to bring every kind of um, every kind of way to the public of how the enemy is killing people and Uh destroying them and separating them from their father. And uh, he didn't want that. So our job is to save one more now. And it doesn't matter if it's babies or if it's young people or if it's the elderly or it doesn't matter if they are in the image of of Jesus. Um, Like um, I think it's uh, Romans 8, 29 says that he... um, the Lord's purpose is to conform us to the image of Jesus. Mm-hmm. That's what we want to see. So now, how did you go about doing the ministry? What does the ministry involve? Well, a lot of it is a lot of Bible study. Uh-huh. We do a lot of Bible study. We do a lot of reading the Bible. Um, we try not to give our opinions mm-hmm. because it's an opinion. Everybody's now, are you got having opinion. like group studies or are you inviting people in, or is this just you and your husband together? This is Jerry and I right now. Okay. We have had uh, group studies, and at some time in the future, we may do that mm-hmm. again. But um, right now, the way we're set up and the way our schedule is, uh, it takes about 40 hours a week to do a 30 minute message. Okay. So. Um, we uh with with other things that we have going on uh right now it's just the um it's just the the 30 minute message you know the 30 minute messages and you are broadcasting these yes okay and uh tell us all about that well from time to time also let me just add uh we bring in guests okay. like um last year we did a um four part program where the lady gave her testimony and how the lord delivered her and uh, that was the most um, listened to broadcast. Really? Wow. It was amazing, right? So, so your your show uh, program, you, you call it a show or a program. It doesn't matter <laughs> yeah, it, either. It, it doesn't really matter, yeah. So you, it's kind of a variety in a way. Oh, yeah. You, you oh, can yeah. do interviews or sometimes it's just the two of you mm-hmm. teaching and, and uh, mm-hmm. maybe having conversation with one another. Yes. And, and the name of the, the program is Save One More Now? Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. And usually we have a title for the program itself that is airing. Uh, we would give a title at the beginning of the show. And often what we talk about are the critical issues okay. um, that we are experiencing today. For instance, um, our program this week that will air is uh, talking about prayer for the family. And we are using scripture, various scripture verses, and we read those and we pray 
for the uh, for the uh, family because often what we get after we air a program, we have um, people calling and asking for prayer. Uh-huh. So now, do you all, uh, is it just open dialogue? In other words, we have a topic, we're just talking, or do you do more pre-planning? Well, we hope it sounds like that, uh-huh. but it's actually scripted, okay. and we've you know, I remember this. That's mm-hmm. the reason I'm asking the yeah. question. Because mm-hmm. you all actually sit down and write out scripts. Mm-hmm. Yes. And you all are still doing that. Mm-hmm. Yes. That's amazing. <laughs> I well, mean, we have binders upon binders. I upon bet binders. you do. <laughs> <laughs> we've gotten kind of good at it. Yeah, well, that's, but it's working for you. Mm-hmm. Yes. And, and so you 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 know what pretty much what you're going to say mm-hmm. before the show starts. But you're talking about prep. Mm-hmm. You're, you're, you're spending some time doing this. Yeah, yeah that's the research uh, and all that's needed because um, we want to ensure that we share the truth uh-huh. and we want to give uh, the actual facts right. uh, of um, what it is that we're talking about. We want to ensure that we're using the appropriate scripture mm-hmm. and... Um, and you have to be very, very yeah. careful. <laughs> but uh, you talking about people who have to be disciplined. I mean, evidently, you all are disciplined people to be oh. able. To <laughs> we're, try- we're trying. <laughs> <laughs> because well, we've, I- uh, we've actually got it down to. Um, I know how many lines, fourteen size font, Arial font that we can put on a page, and we can gauge how much time that's going to be. And that's been very, very helpful <laughs> because on some uh, programs, on some stations, you know, on some we get 30 minutes, on others is 29 and a half minutes, on some it's just uh-huh. 29 minutes. And so we have to ensure that we do everything and say everything that we need to say, uh, you know, within the, those time limits to meet the uh, obligations. Now, when did station. you all start this particular ministry? Do you remember? I know you were here in 2018. Yes, we. St- the first message was, um, I think it was the first Sunday in 2016, January okay. 2016, and um, those first messages. Oh, we had an interview with um, with a lady. We met uh, her grandparents at uh, a restaurant in Apalachicola, and they were telling us about um, their granddaughter's son who was born prematurely Uh and how she was doing all these things to try to protect him and keep him from being aborted um and that was our first that was our first message so we kind of started out with um abortion minded things where we were we were trying to tell people uh, a, a baby in utero is a human being that okay. God put there, and the only way you're going to have people is, you know, sexual reproduction, and it's a holy thing that um, has been uh, tarnished right now. So we were trying to let people know this is a real baby, uh, showing pictures, and then we had interviews with, um, um, I think Jamie Brown. We had an interview with her. We had an interview with, and she's with AWPC. We had uh, an interview with Jerry Callum, Ryan. and he's got an adoption um, agency. I want to say in Gainesville. He's out of Gainesville. Hmm. And then we were with Ryan Sprague, who at the time was with the Phi right. Center. Yeah, he's gone now with uh, uh, Fellowship of Christian, Christian Athletes. Right. 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 Yeah. And then we kind of branched out um, into writing air. Um, prose like um i guess essays uh-huh. and that seems to be right now the most um fruitful um way to do this as a matter of fact the young lady that um we did her message last year it was a four part she had to give her testimony she had to write it out <laughs> really? then i yes and and she was she was really kind of particular about how it was going to sound and i had to you know, work with it. I had to edit it. I think that was the hardest thing I did, but it sounded the. Be- I was so pleased that the Lord helped us to make that sound so good. Um, and it was her testimony of being delivered from drugs and fear. And um, so now, everybody, when you interview people, do you have them write it out before the interview? We try to. Hers was. We had heard about her testimony, but hers was so deep and detailed. Uh-huh. 
um, it was better for her to write it out because I never could have asked her the questions uh-huh. that came up when okay. she was writing that. We have tried um, sometimes to ask people about their testimony, but basically it seems to work better if they tell us what they want to say and then I edit that. And then right. we go. But from when there. you when you call somebody to come to be on your program, mm-hmm. you tell them ahead of time you you have to have everything written down. Mm-hmm. Do you? And they mm-hmm. they respond well to that. Oh yes, mm-hmm. really. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it never mm-hmm. even occurred to me. Yeah. <laughs> and we have some uh, that we've asked, and uh, they are getting around to it. Right. <laughs> and so, and that's fine. That's right. fine. When they give it to us, then we will work it into um, our plan. But uh, we have to be organized to keep track of what it is that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. We have to be sensitive to the um, holidays, you know, ensuring that the message, uh, let's say like for Father's Day, Mother's Day, for Independence Day, and the Lord gives us um, ways to present that in a message form that is um, tied back to the Word Uh of God. For instance, the uh, Independence Day uh, message that's going to air on the uh, 2nd and 3rd of July, it talks about your Independence Day. And it's really about when the Lord set you free. Uh It's when He came into your life and you accepted Him as Lord and Savior, the freedom that you have and the independence that you have. And then the message to follow that will be your dependence day mm-hmm. and uh, understanding how crucial crucial it is for you to depend on him and uh, you're not a, a long ranger and that you need to under understand what has been done to get you to where you are and how much he loves and he cares for you and you can go to him at any point at any time you know, and he's right. there for you. So now the, the programs are thirty minutes. Mm-hmm. Yes, right. Mm-hmm. So of that time, like if you have a guest on the show, mm-hmm. they won't be doing thirty minutes of content because you've got other things that you're doing in there too. So basically, you're asking them to write write out about it, maybe a twenty minute kind of a testimony, that type of thing. Well, sometimes it may be twenty uh, minutes because uh, what we've learned is this is. Um, People enjoy music to complement the program. Okay. And so uh, we usually have a song okay. or two. So that, that cuts the time down just even a little bit. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and to ensure that we uh, deal with the integrity of the message, sometimes it may be two messages. It may not be a single message because mm-hmm. we want the people to be able to say everything that they have to say. I see. Okay. Well, it's just a different dynamic. That's why I'm, that's why yeah. I'm intrigued from the way that I roll. You see the mm-hmm. way I roll. <laughs> I said, that's good. I said, folks, come on, we're just going to talk. Yes. And, that's and great. It, and it seems to work out pretty well that yes. way. And, of course, now on my music show, I'm playing music and I'm talking in between. And I'm just saying, Lord, flow through me. <laughs> and uh, and it seems, if you ever listen to one of my music shows, you'll, you'll hear me. I'm, I'm responding to the music as it speaks to me. On my daily broadcast, I generally will have maybe a couple words <laughs> that's, that's kind of going to get me in the right direction. And then I just say, Lord, just flow. And I can tell that when I come in here, I usually do that on Sunday night. And I can tell when I'm when I'm flowing in the spirit. Mm-hmm. And other times I'm not. And there's yes. been times I had to just walk away. I said, it's just, it's just not happening tonight. Well, but the other thing that's interesting is uh, the Lord would give us what he wants us to talk about. Mm-hmm. Sure. Sure. And so uh, I'm a jogger. I usually jog every uh, every day, and uh, he'd tell me what it is that he once said. And it's interesting because it's always when we get around to airing that program, it is something that's ministering to people. Yeah. You know? So the Holy Spirit speaking to you yes. as you're running. Yes. Yeah, that's, mm-hmm. yeah, that's great. Yeah. <laughs> and that's that's a good way to hear from God. Yes. Because one thing when you're 
when you're flowing in the spirit like that, you're not thinking about the aches and pains no. <laughs> that mm-hmm. you're running. And then you just kind of you kind of get out of your mind as far as thinking about things, and you're just next thing you know, it runs over. That's right. And then and the Holy Spirit spoke to you in such a way. Is that right? <laughs> it's amazing what he can do if you if you were in a position like that where you're uncomfortable and then you just slip into worship. You know what? Lord, I'm just going to praise you. I'm just going to thank you for this pain because it means that I'm not injured where I can't feel it. Right. I'm going to thank you for this, that, and the other. And he just, he's so good to just clear all the all the crazy stuff sure. up. And even if he doesn't, it's like I have power. <laughs> I have power to, to yeah. go through whatever it is I need to do. And then the next thing I know, that's that's over and I'm off doing something now, else. Are you a jogger too? No, sir. No. <laughs> Those days be. are long She gone. used to be. She certainly did. Uh, okay. And that's, you decided to, uh, enough of this? Well, I've, I've had some back injuries, so walking is walking is it. So walking, you're a walker. Yes, sir. So, but you, you can get the same experience when you're walking, when the Holy Spirit begins to speak to you. Oh, yeah. See, with me, it's when I'm working. Yeah. And I'm out there just doing what I'm doing, and, and uh, God's just showing me different things, and I get sermons and all kinds of stuff, because the kind of work I do doesn't really require a whole lot of brain power. I, I do the same thing all the time, so I just, it's just, all oh, that's mechanical. Yeah. And so my mind's free enough so that God can just, use that time to tell me things and uh, as a matter of fact uh, in, in my book I write about uh, when God called me back to radio ministry that's what I was doing I was, I was working mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, he says well just stop for a few minutes here I got something to talk to you about so yeah. I think that's great yeah, because you know it tells you that God does speak to us oh, yeah. certainly through all kinds of ways oh, yeah. and, and sometimes the, the quietness of the time when you're jogging or the, when I'm working or when you're walking. I Actually, lo- I hear from him when I'm making the bed or washing dishes or washing clothes. That's yeah. when I that's when I hear a lot. Yeah, yeah. Because your mind is free, even though your body is still mechan- mechanically going about. Mm-hmm. And, and a lot of times it's something God's been wanting to get some time to talk to you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and maybe, maybe you're in the bedroom by yourself making up the bed. Nobody else is there. And hey, maybe me to have a little conversation with mm-hmm. you here. And that's a good time yes, to do that sort certainly. of thing. The Lord has given many revelations about things uh, in a uh, message. He will start out usually in giving us a title. Right. And then we have to go and do some work. And um, so it's a process. It is a, um, a stair step process. You get the title, you go and do your research and do the things that you need to do. You put together a, um, an outline, and then uh, he helps you fill in the outline. As yeah, I'm just amazed at your wants. discipline. Yeah. <laughs> I, I just, it's just amazing that you've done this. But now, had you all done radio ministry prior to starting this? No. So what what brought this about? How did how did radio happen to be what you're doing? Well, we were on our way to Apalachicola, and uh, there was a uh, pier that we would go to in Apalachicola uh, to pray and to seek the Lord, and that's what we were on our way to do one Sunday. And um, as we were about to go over the large bridge to mm-hmm. enter the uh, city. Um, R- Ravi uh, Zacharias came on and was talking about uh, radio and how many uh, how important radio is in reaching the masses and uh, the Lord spoke to me and spoke to us rather and said uh, this is what I want you all to do okay and so what did you do after that how did, how did you start home. Yeah. we came back home went to Scott Beagle well, we went to our mentor and uh, prayed and talked with our mentor about it. Uh, this was on a Sunday evening. And then uh, the next day, I went to uh, Scott Beagle. And, um, and did, him, did you know him prior to this? Yes, but it was through the Pregnancy Center because okay. I'm affiliated with the uh, Pregnancy Center. I knew Scott. Okay, now so, some of the radio owners may not know who Scott Beagle is. Okay. I didn't want to mention it. Yeah, okay. No, no, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> We're on he's the same the, team. <laughs> yeah. He's the uh, president of Faith Radio. And so um, I went to Scott and he said, I'll give you a try. Okay. It sounds like a good plan. I'll give you a try. And he put us on at an ideal time on Faith Radio, which is uh, Saturdays at 1. Okay. And, um, 
So that started in 2016. Uh, we gave him a test run, and I'm going to tell you, it was very, very rough, but Scott was very, very helpful. Sure. Yeah. And uh, we learned a lot. Let me put it this way. Adrian learned a lot. Still learning. She's, <laughs> still learning. She's the uh, genius. The guitar center uh, helped us a lot with the equipment. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I, I go with her from time to time. Yeah. yeah. And so... Uh, so that's how we got started. Because see, the thing about it is that people don't understand that if, if you say, okay, God's called me to do radio ministry, and, and you've not done this before, and you don't have any equipment, and you can't always go to the radio station to do it. Now, when I first started at WCVC 1330 AM, I would go over there and do it live. Now... That's a challenge because <laughs> there is no editing <laughs> when you when you're going live, it's going to come out what it is. They they, they heard it, okay. But then for me, uh, after three years at, at WCVC, I was doing the daily broadcast and the talk show there. One Saturday morning, after I'd finished the talk show up, the phone rang. It was a station manager. He said, "That's your last show," and I'm going. What did I do? And they said, it's also your last daily broadcast. And I said, what did I do? <laughs> they were closing. Oh. Mm -hmm. They closed. Oh, okay. my. So then I went to WTAL for a year, again, live. But then when God opened the opportunity for me to go to uh, the Smooth Jazz Station, which is 97.9, which later became ESPN, and I was on there for 14 years, they're closed on Sunday, and I, we, I went from a Saturday format to a Sunday format. I don't know anything about recording, <laughs> any of that sort of thing. And I'm just like you, Adrian. I had to just start the experiment, and I made mistakes. As a matter of fact, the first, well, okay, I did about a year, maybe two years, to where I'm on, on um, let's see, WCVC. 13.30 a.m., okay, but then I decided I wanted to expand out to other stations, so I'm going to start sending cassettes out, <laughs> and cassettes by that time had already phased out anyway, mm -hmm. but I'm using a cassette. I don't know how to go out recording it. I found a recorder here in the church. I, I managed to make my recording, got it in a package to send it out to the radio station. I'm on my way to the radio station. I'm driving this old truck. And I laid it up on the console of that truck, and I made a curb, and that station, uh, that 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 package with this cassette that I fixed to mail out, goes through a crack in the truck, in the truck falls on the pavement, and I ran over it. <laughs> oh mercy! <laughs> and I said, "Lord, are you trying to tell me something here? Maybe, that, maybe that I shouldn't do this." Uh, I think he more said, "No, it's just a challenge. Just see if you're serious about this thing." So I made my mistakes. But we learn, see? And, yes. And as time goes on, we get better. And I tell people this all the time. I said, one of the sayings that I use on this show a lot, I say, well, how do you launch a dream? And I say, you put one foot in front of the other and let God lead. That's right. and, and he'll open doors and he'll close doors. And when you begin, you won't be as good as you will be five years from now. Amen. So it's just like you all. <laughs> I remember when you all came and you told me what you were doing. You, you, you scripted everything. I'm going, how do you do that? But you've done it. Mm -hmm. and, and it's working for you. And, it's, and people are getting ministry from what you're doing, see? And you're being faithful to do yes, it. Yes, I was in Publix the other day and the lady said, um, I caught your program. Huh. I said, oh, really? And she said, "Yes." Now, did, did you know her? I well, she is the lady. Um, I usually, when I have questions about different supplements, vitamins, and so uh -huh. forth to buy, uh, I will go and try to find her. Right. And uh, so, does she know that you were on the radio? Uh, I do not remember. Did you tell her, Adrian? <laughs> At the first, I think I, I may, I may have, I may have. <laughs> okay. Yeah, because I get that sometimes. Yeah, I'll be around town and something. And people say, okay, let me hear that voice a little more. Yeah. I've, I've heard you somewhere before. Yeah. And, and it, matter of fact, I was on jury duty one time, and mm. I was the foreman. And we'd, we'd finished up the whole thing. We were waiting for the bailiff to come. And I said, well, let's just everybody get to know each other. So we went around the room. And when it came to me, I said, if you want to get to know me a little more, just listen, to, turn into 97.9 on Sunday morning. And the guy next to me says, I knew I'd heard that yes. voice somewhere before. And we've had that, too. Yeah, sure, yeah. sure, because people don't see your no. faces 
that they hear your voice. Mm -hmm. and, and I had a guy tell me one time that, that, that does broadcasting. He said, people come to the conclusion that either they like the sound of your voice or they do not. Yes. And if they do, then they're going to be drawn to tune in again. Yeah, and that's how audiences are, are built in yes. uh, such a, such a, such a way. And I thought, and I've kind of taken that at the heart. I said, well, um, everybody's voice is different. So I'm I'm country, <laughs> and people know I'm country, and either they like it or they don't. Nothing wrong with that. No, no, and uh, so, so the audience is what it's going to be. Sometimes people just like to hear the word. True. So, yes. <laughs> And we had a lady uh, to tell us that uh, our voices are so soothing mm -hmm. and uh, it's easy for her to go to sleep listening to right. us. And I wasn't quite sure how to take that, <laughs> but she meant it in a very positive way. Sure, sure way. she did. Yeah. 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 So. That's kind of like the preacher. I said, oh, you're, you're telling me that I put you to sleep every Sunday morning. I said, that's a, not quite the intention here, but <laughs> hey, if it works, it works. Yes. <laughs> uh, this is the Gospel on the Radio Talk Show. I'm having a great time here with Adrian and, and uh, Jerry and Adrian Hendricks. Uh, Save One More Now is the name of their ministry. And it's, they're just fascinating people, and I just love to hear from them. I want to hear more about your testimonies of faith, how God called you to faith, and we'll get to that. But right now, now, people who listen to this show all the time, they know I love Southern God. This is the Booth Brothers. I like Booth Brothers. And it's called, you got to get a little dirt on your hands. Sometimes it's hard to do a good deed in a tough situation for a friend in need. I always like that song because it reminds me of the Good Samaritan mm. and how he had to get down off of his beast and he had to go down in the ditch and he had to get blood on, his, on himself and get dirt on himself to yes. be able to minister to somebody. And that's sometimes that what, it's what ministry is. It's that's not true. always easy and it's not always clean work. And no. sometimes you deal with people who are unlovely. But guess what? God loves the unlovely. Exactly. Yeah, and he did yeah. that for us too. Amen. This is the Gospel on the Radio Talk Show. I'm Pastor Jack King. Got a few things to tell you. First of all, you can you can get this uh, show on the podcast. It's show number 1078. Um, Adrian and uh, Jerry and Adrian <laughs> Adrian Hendricks. And uh, you can listen to it again or share it with a friend if you want to. Also, you can um, contact me through Radio Gospel dot uh, us. We just got that up and running for you. And on the uh, Radio Gospel website, there's a place for you to register for the youth camp. Now, the youth camp is coming up July 18 through 22. It's for ages 8 through 18 uh, with junior camp and senior camp. So we run two camps side by side. Uh, twelve year olds can go junior or senior camp. It's a hundred and fifty dollar registration, which is very cheap. You know that. For a full week of youth camp. We have great ministry, a lot of fun, but we bring the word of God to young people. And I'm encouraging you to get involved. If you have children, grandchildren, children in your church, Christian Youth Ministries International or CYMI Youth Camp, July 18 through 24. It's co uh, coming up close, very, very fast now. So it's time to get them uh, lined up and ready to go. So go to radiogospel.us, click on the place there for the camp, and you can register the young people right then and there. Don't forget to join me every Saturday night here on 94.1 for the Saturday Night Gospel Sing. It's a full hour of the, <laughs> I say, the best music on the planet. I love Southern Gospel. And uh, you'll find that as you listen to the show, you'll find Pastor King enjoys the music. And so I encourage you to join me. And also Monday through Friday here on 94.1, the daily broadcast, the gospel on the radio broadcast, a daily Bible teaching of the Word of God. Jerry and Adrian Hendricks. Yes. Save one more now. Yes. But have you all always been people of faith? No. No. <laughs> I was, um, as I mentioned, I think at the start of the program, I retired in 2011. Uh, I was a moderate Christian okay. uh, then, and um, 
but the Lord called me to retirement. I wasn't asked to leave. In fact, the company uh, contracted with me after I left for a period. Yeah, what did you do? I was uh, vice president, regular, regulatory. Now you, you told that to me before we went on the air, but you didn't tell the radio audience. Right. Uh, okay. I so. was vice president, regulatory for AT&T okay. for the state of Florida. And uh, for a short while, I also had uh, Puerto Rico and the U.S. Virgin Islands. And uh, it was a good, it was an excellent job. I enjoyed the people. Uh, but the Lord started dealing with me in 2010 and he was very patient and he was telling me uh it's time for you to go i got work for you to do uh -huh. and um so it was a major struggle for me so at that time you didn't know what it was going to be i mean you didn't know anything about radio at that point or had got well, spoke to you about that i knew that it was going to no we didn't know anything about radio at that point okay. i knew that it would be um Something dealing with the life issue because okay. I was on the uh, board at the uh, pregnancy center, right. a women's uh, pregnancy center. With um, I don't know that Jamie was the executive director then, but Bob Shackelford was. Right, right. And so, um, so I was there. So I knew he was calling us to do things with the life issue, and right. I've been on the board since with the uh, pregnant pregnancy center. And um, then he expanded the uh, opportunity to talk to people about life, and that's where the radio ministry I see. Uh, okay. came in. Now, w the name, where did the name come from? Save One More Now. That's <laughs> Did well, I come up with that name? Yeah, yeah. somebody's going to have to talk here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is radio, you remember? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I suppose I did come up with that name. It was, um, it, and it was really focusing on the uh, babies. Okay. Uh, but then it, it has grown to focus on people, period, because uh, at the uh, center, uh, we get males and females, you know, uh, if they come into the center. And fortunately, we're able to share the word of God with the people that come in. And uh, we want them to be saved too. It's not just saving the babies from right, being right. aborted. Oh yeah, but it's uh, pointing those people to the Lord and Savior yeah. Jesus Christ. I think I've had most of the directors on the show somewhere along the line, and I've I know their passion. Yes. And, uh, uh, but now, where does that passion for you all come in? The whole saving the babies type of thing. I mean, you you're on the board at the at the Women's Pregnancy Center. Mm -hmm. Where did that passion come from? It came from. Uh, uh, our daughter, uh, believe it or not, in 2009, I think it was 2009, she held a benefit art show for a uh, center up in Marietta, Georgia. And uh, they raised, uh, I think, about $3,000 that one night uh, for that center. And it was, uh, was it for, Adrian is telling me it was 4000 4, Okay. And, um, and I started asking her, I said, uh, Danielle, is this something that the Lord is calling you to do to become more involved in uh, the pro-life uh, ministry? And um, she said, well, Dad, I'll pray about it and ask him, you know, and see what he says. Uh, a little while later, she came back and she said, Dad, you, you need to talk with the Lord about it, but the Lord hasn't called me to that but I believe he wants you to do that. Really? Wow. And so um, so I went to the Lord and was asking him, and uh, he led us to uh, doing that. So now did you know about the Women's Pregnancy Center by that, at that time? Um, I knew about it, yes. Yeah. But, uh, but you were not involved in I it was anyway. Not involved. Mm -hmm. So basically, you you just go down and introduce yourself to to. Well, ladies. I had a friend, uh, Marcus Winchester. Okay. He was, um, I believe, he was the board president at that time, and um, I had some other ministry type things that I was doing along with Marcus and Mark Winchester, and um, so he invited me, and I told him I wanted to become involved to learn more about what was happening. So um, he made that happen okay. for us. Now, Adrian, where did you come and get involved in this? And when you when you heard this word, did that speak to you? Um, I was 
working on what the Lord told me, whatever your husband is doing, you stop what you're doing and you go with him. Yeah, you should, now, again, <laughs> I don't remember. Did, did you share that before we went on the air? Or, I may or, not have. Uh, yeah, go ahead and talk about that again. I may not have. I was really involved in art education because I had um, three earned degrees. I had a studio degree in sculpture, um, and then I had an, uh, an art education degree, and then I had... Um, uh, a master's in curriculum and instruction and I was working with the Georgia Art Education uh, Association and uh, trying to um, bolster uh, private schools okay. uh, in art education and um, one time there was a, there was a um, there was a um, I'm trying to call it I can't call it right now there was a there was a fair I'm not calling it. It's a convention. It was a okay. convention. Okay. And um, Jerry had something to do, and I was going to the convention, and the Lord told me very clearly, when you have something to do and your husband's going out of town, you cancel what you're doing, and you go with him. Now that was a word from God. That was a word. And he told me about all this stuff I was doing. He said, disappear. Huh. Don't call them and explain what you're doing. He said, disappear. Wow, so <laughs> that's I'm, quite a word. <laughs> I, I'm learning the hard way to to kind of do what he said. That's uh-huh. why um, when he was telling me about uh, when I asked him about politics last year, it's like he didn't even skip a beat. It was like ham radio. And I'm like, now, when me? you say he, you're talking about God here. I'm talking about the Lord. Yeah, okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah, we're going to talk about that in a few minutes. I want to hear more about the ham radio. Thing. Okay. But but so God has, has has spoke to you and said, whenever your husband goes out of town, you're to go with him. Okay. Go out of town if he's got a, a meeting to do. You know, a, a, a preaching opportunity right, or something, right. and you have something else. You cancel whatever you're doing. You make arrangements and you go with him. Now, do you have any idea in your mind why God was speaking to you specifically about that? I have no idea <laughs> in the world. All, all I know is, um, I have, I have used. I used to be um, a technical writer for Bell South. And um, I did a lot of writing in school, okay. and and that was one of my my strong points. Okay. So this writing and editing that we're doing now, that's like nothing for me. Okay. But to go through the Bible and right. then put it together and pray about the message and how it sounds and the tone and all of that and and what to do with the with the envelope peaks and, and right. all this other kind of stuff. It that's all new. But because I I'm insisting on perfection for the Lord as as far as I can do perfection then I make it happen uh-huh. and it doesn't matter if I have to stay up all night it's going to happen I was wondering if one of you had a background in, in that type of thing mm-hmm. so when you all decided to start doing the radio ministry such as this seemed like the natural way to do it for you well, it, it turned into that because yeah. I had no idea what I was doing but it kind of morphed yeah. into that it kind of grew into that and um People seem to to really like what we have. Uh-huh. Um, we try to to give them a soft message. A lot of people, um, they're not quite so soft. I'm not trying to talk negative, but it's no, like no, you're right. You know, they they don't quite talk so. Different so, styles. Yeah, they have different styles. Yeah. But this style is unique. Yeah. Um, and we we have a whole thirty minutes, and we get into some things people would rather not hear, but we're going to say it because we want them to know this will keep you away from your father who sent his son to die for you so you could be with him. Right. Right. So we're taking the chance right. to explain to them and then tell them, you know what, all you got to do is change your mind. Jesus said, repent, change your mind, and he will take you. The word is is there. He said he doesn't. Um, delight in the destruction of the wicked but he wants the wicked to repent so we're kind of like that because we used to be that way uh-huh. you know so um, but I'm but I'm curious about okay now this is it was your background to, to write things out and, and you were doing this in your job uh-huh. so when you first started Jerry in this did this seem like the right way to you or, or did was there any different Opinions are well. No, uh, the thing that I uh, also did at uh, AT and T, I was their professional witness. 
And, okay. uh, when, and what that is, is that I would be the spokesperson for a company, for the uh, company before the um, FCC on certain issues or before the Public Service okay. Commission on certain issues. And so uh, writing testimony. Uh -huh. So you both had similar backgrounds. Testimony, okay. yes. Okay. Was something that we had to do on a regular uh, basis, you know, and it became the legal. Well, what's that guy uh, say? He says, I love it when a plan comes together. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you all thought you all were just doing this for your job, and all the time God was training you for something totally different. Yes, exactly. <laughs> but he exactly. does that. He, yeah. works, he works like that. It's like mm -hmm. this thing with the hand radio. I have no idea why I do that, why I'm doing that. But what I've learned is I'm always, my reach, is it your reach exceeds your grasp? Or the other way, or the other way around, and it's like I'm always going towards something I don't know about, and I just immerse myself and try to figure out what it is, and just keep at it. Right. So, so you are again approaching God. Says God, "What, what do you got for me here?" And He says, "Ham radio." Mm -hmm. you, you never heard that word before. You never done a ham radio before, right? Well, I heard about it, but I didn't know anybody who was a ham. I didn't know anything about it. Um, all I knew was sometimes those guys do uh, Morse code. That was it. I, did, I didn't know anything right. about all the bands and and the protocol and all of that. Now, is I ham know. short for something? Is that it is. It is. Um, it is kind of a, an old name that was, um, it's like a throwback to the old telegraph operators. And sometimes when they, um, when they would key their, their letters, some people said, well, they're hamming. They got, uh -huh. they got those hams that they're, that okay. they're keying. I see. I just learned something here. Yeah. Okay. So that's where the, the, the term ham radio comes from. Yeah. And it's, it's an affectionate term right. now. But now ham radio is not like what we're doing now. No. It has a totally different purpose. Am I right about that? Yes, yes. It's a it's a hobby, and you don't broadcast on ham radio. As a matter of fact, it's uh, it's illegal to um, or or outside of the rules to uh, broadcast on ham radio or have music on it unless you're on the ISS space station and you're you're transmitting and that music happens to be incidental. But we okay, transmit. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah, IMS space station. What's that? Well. Um, there is, there are a lot of different ways that ham radio can uh, propagate the signals. Okay. And one of them is on the International Space Station. And if the, if the conditions are right in the atmosphere, um, a ham can um, make a transmission to the station and it will, uh, they can talk to somebody there or it can bounce off and talk to somebody else on the other side of the earth. <laughs> so there there are a lot of fantastic things and one thing I like about ham radio is like there is no you know people talk about um, evolution when you talk about you know um, animals and plants and whatever there is no evolution when it comes to, to radio and electronic frequencies there is no you can't talk about evolution with electronic and magnetic frequencies it's like no God put that there <laughs> <laughs> it's like, excuse me. <laughs> so now, what is the purpose of ham radio? Well, beside being a hobby, because a lot of people like to contact, uh, they like to to contact folks. They like to contact, I'm sorry, contact people on the other side of the planet or some friends right. that they have. But it's also, um, it has been used in some emergencies. Like, for example, right. um, when we had... Um, um, what's the one they had in uh, Michael, in New it? Orleans? Uh, Katrina. Katrina. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, there were a lot of ham radios that went a lamp a ham radio operators who but, went but, into. But you say you're, they don't broadcast. So what are they doing? I mean, it's transmit. Just transmitting what? Well, they transmit their their signal. They transmit their call sign, which is a combination of letters and uh, numbers. They talk about the the radio or the transceiver that um, they're using. They're talking about their uh, antenna rig that they have, the antenna right. setup they have. They're talking about... Um, but, but they're not doing it through voice? They're doing it through some other way? Some of them do voice. Okay. Some of them do um, digital. There, there are a lot of different digital they can do. Uh, some of them do... Um, some of them do still RTTY, and um, they also do um, Morse code. 
Okay. Okay. So, so they there and did you know that there is also something where you can uh, transmit ham radio signals off the moon and off of um, rain, off of rain <laughs> scatter. Really? Yeah. But the thing is, is somebody in an emergency, they can they can you can transmit information. Yes. Through the work of the of the ham radio. Yes. Or, or that that type of thing. Because yes. I've been hearing about ham radio all my life. Don't really understand it, and now you've given us the information that's just totally confused me. <laughs> well, can I can I make a plug for it? Sure. This um, Saturday and Sunday at Tom Brown Park, uh-huh. we're having field day. The Tallahassee Amateur Radio Society is holding field day okay. uh, from two o'clock on Saturday to two o'clock. The only Sunday. problem is that this show will air on Sunday. Well, and so they're going to miss it. <laughs> that's all. That's all right. It'll get them ready for next year <laughs> next because year. they have field day every year. It's the last okay. full weekend of June. Right. Let me ask you this. We'll just leave this at, the, at this point. If somebody want to find out more about ham radio? Would they, who would they call? Is it, is, it, is it online somewhere where they can go online and find out about it? They can. They can go yeah. to arrl.org. That's American Radio Relay League dot org. Okay. And they can look around in there and uh, type in their zip code to find. And it doesn't have to be in Tallahassee. It can be wherever yeah. they are. But are there people using ham radio to proclaim the gospel? I heard that there were. Okay. But um, I don't have an antenna deplo- that can deploy that that low yet. <laughs> okay. But I'm looking forward to it. Right, right. Okay. Well, the thing is, is that that's, you know, we're, uh, I, my heart, like your heart, is save one more now. Yes. <laughs> and uh, be it ham radio, be it through radio, or whatever means that God has to be able to utilize his technology Amen. to expand the borders of God's kingdom. Yes, now, that's hallelujah. A, that's, maybe that's why the Lord has gotten her involved in it. Um, well, he's see, wanting to do more. We don't know yet. Yeah, exactly. Because I, I don't think that's matured totally for you yet. God's got a plan that he's going to reveal to you and he's going to use this. And so, because he wouldn't have spoken to you if he, if he hadn't. Well, I mean, it's up to him. The, sure. the thing is, my thing is, I just want to obey. If I hear Amen. him say something, I want to do you. what he says. And I don't want to ask questions. <laughs> I don't want to get ahead of him. I don't want to drag behind. I just, and if I need yeah. help, I'm learning. Jesus, help me. <laughs> help uh, uh, Miss, me, please. Uh, Ms. Adrian, let me ask you this. Have you always been a person of faith? I have been since like 19. 19- 1982. Prior to that, were you? I mean, I was. I was. I was a. I was a heathen, and I didn't care. Okay, so did you had no church background as a child? No, or? I had a church background. I had a church background. My parents had it. My father had a church background. His father had a church background, and some of the some of the religious things that were done, um, I felt I could not. I could not get to God, right, and I wanted right. to get to God. And then, when just when my parents um, separated, I was I was done. Uh-huh. I was done. But um, the Lord is so funny. It's not not funny, ha ha. But Good you know funny. what? He yes, it, it's delicious <laughs> because He will let you go. Um, you know the way you want to go, but when He gets ready to reel you in, right, baby, just turn loose. Now, did you all? know each other when you're both out of faith or in faith? Uh, we knew each other when we were out of faith. Uh, we knew each other from college. Okay. And uh, I went to Morehouse College, and she at the time was at Spelman College, and we met there. We were in some of the same classes. And uh, you know, how, how does that work? Two different colleges. They are across the street. Uh, Morehouse is an all-male school. Okay. And Spelman is an all-female school. Oh, really? <laughs> and um, but they, so they share you, classes. Yeah, we share classes. Okay, okay. And um, so we sh- took classes together, and then she left Spelman and went over to Georgia State. Okay. And one Sunday, I saw her at a Dairy Queen, not too far from the college campus, and um, we've been seeing each other every day since. Really? And that's been forty, almost 47 years okay, ago. So when you first got married, you were not in faith? Uh-uh. No. Okay. So what happened that, to change that? Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I suppose for 
for me, it was um, we started going to church because uh, Adrian's dad was a pastor, but uh, we had friends that went to church, and we started learning um, about that. And I suppose the thing that really drove me to faith is because uh, I got so caught up in my work, and the Lord got my attention, uh, and I learned that my wife and daughter were going to leave me uh-huh. because I was so caught up in the work, and my life changed. Wow. Wow. And uh, the Lord spoke to Adrian and said, I didn't tell you to leave. Uh, but uh, your dad was a pastor. Mm-hmm. He, he just told us this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but this, is, this was part of the, your rejection. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. But, so there was just things that just, you, you were questioning. If that, so so you, did, you didn't like abandon God. You just kind of took a little retreat. <laughs> well, it, it was like what I wanted from God, they weren't pre- they weren't showing me it was religion and okay. um, there okay. was no holiness in it. There was no dedication. I didn't want that. And okay. and I left because I said, I'm not playing with God like okay. that. I'm, but uh, when Jerry started <coughs> expressing faith, did that change, help, help you in your transition? Or? No, because he was following me. Okay. So, so you had already kind of come to a place in your life where you realize you needed to renew your relationship yes. with God. Yeah. Okay. And so then, then you got the impression that she's about to leave. That's oh, that got your attention. She was ready. Oh. She was ready. <laughs> okay. You know, I had gone yeah. off to work and uh, she was teaching at the uh, same school that our daughter was attending and um, she had already made plans. She knew where she was going to go and uh, I was going to come home and find out that they were gone. So did you talk to her when you come home? I mean, uh, yes, but I didn't know all of that until right. later. Okay, uh, she did not reveal. But at that at that point, your lives began to change. Yes, and you began a relationship of just seeking the Lord. Yes, and of course, I'm sure that had to have enriched your marriage. Yes, and then you know things progressed to where we are here today. Mm-hmm. We're talking about your involvement in this ministry that you've been in now six, seven, eight years, I, I suppose. Uh, well, no, uh, it's been eleven years. Eleven years. Yeah. Yeah, doing years. doing mm-hmm. this radio broadcast where you're you're sick of the lost yes. <laughs> and you're mm-hmm. you're you're taking your time, your finances, and your commitment to put the gospel out there. Yes, yes, and, and, and trying to trying to tell those who who think that they are saved but their life is not lining up. Uh-huh. It's like line it up. If okay. you, if you're saved, your life is going to change and it'll be good. But you know, be honest about what you're doing or what you're not doing, and look at the word. It'll tell you it doesn't change. He doesn't change. Right, right. But all of that through the process of God drawing you closer to who He was. I find this a lot of times in interviews that I have yes. with people that the people they were they grew up in church, whatever, but they they wandered away, and then something will happen. Yes, and God will begin to bring them back, and then He'll go, "Hey, I got something for you to do." Yes, <laughs> and I just I'm, I'm always amazed. At that, how yes. that, how God does that process. I have this uh, uh, thing that I, I refer to in, in teaching. So sometimes, especially when I was doing the youth for the region, um, of, of an event called Vision, where I would just be teaching, and I had thing of what I call fish of the future. And fish of the future is when God calls you to do ministry in some way. He's going to bring people around you to help you do your ministry, and some of them are not even saved yet. That's and right. they're going to be people that's going to come to Christ mm-hmm. through your influence mm-hmm. and the ministry that God's called you to do. God's going to win them, and then they're going to be right there with you. And yes. I can testify to that. Yes. I mean, a lot of the team that I have in, in uh, youth ministry are people who've come to Christ from the ministry that, that God called me to do. And so I said, okay. You don't understand how it's all going to work? Don't worry about it. He's got it. <laughs> yes, he does. Well, I can tell you, the Lord is very, um, Adrian said, funny. And it's not funny, ha-ha, but it's, um, it's interesting because uh, as a child, I went to speech therapy for years. Uh-huh. You know the country music singer uh, Mel Tellis? Oh, yeah, sure. Okay. I was worse than Mel Tellis. Really? Oh, yeah. I couldn't get a sentence out in five minutes. It was just really, huh. really, really bad. And now uh, he has me preaching the gospel, not just through radio, but we go around to different churches right, and right. so forth and uh, preach. And so um, someone that couldn't talk 
Isn't that amazing? And he's using it. Mm-hmm. That's a, the, the parish family, which is one of the gospel groups that I play. <laughs> they live up in uh, Mainbridge, Georgia. They had this song that says, that's my God. Yes, and that's what he does. Yes, <laughs> sure is. And the one of those verses, another prayer, another healing, and that's just who that's the God that we serve. Yes, and, 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 and the miraculous that I think is just amazing. And the very thing that you thought you'd never be able to do, God is now using it for His glory to proclaim His word. Oh, yes. And, uh, yes, not only in the pulpit type of ministry, but. Around the world. Yes. They're hearing the, the voice. Yes. The voice. I think that gets incredible. I really do. I think that God is doing a good thing here. And I am so happy that you folks came back to uh, visit with us again here yes. on the Gospel, on the radio talk show. <laughs> I can't believe that it was, what's, what did I say, four years? Yes. Four yeah. years. Because when I looked at the card the, from the last time you were here, I go, oh, that can't have been four years ago. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'd seen you on the screen, on the, well, the different shows I have listed there. And I thought, well, okay, we got to get them back. But it hadn't been that long. And then I said, four years. So we got to get you back sooner. All right. And, well, and, that's and, and all right. Let you hear, tell the audience uh, what, what God's doing through the these ministries and we'll hear more about the ham radio yes and then how Thank god's you. going to advance that how he's going to use you yes some way somehow i assure you god's got a plan yes he does <laughs> hallelujah amen well we've got about a minute and 48 seconds and we're going to pray before we leave but do you have a last word for us i'm just so grateful and what the lord has done in our lives uh he can do and others uh, that are listening uh, just spend time with him amen you must get to know him amen and uh, through that he'll talk to you and he'll lay out for you the plan that he has but it may just be a a step at a time you got to be faithful in following step at a time one foot in front of the other Mm -hmm. one foot in front of the other exactly (laughs) Father God, I'm thankful, Lord, for this ministry that you have raised up, Father. God, you have put this uh, wondrous burden on their heart to do these things, Father. And they've they've committed themselves to it, Lord. And it's 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 being used around the world. I thank you for that, Father God. Lord God, I pray over this radio audience, Father. I pray for these families. I pray a hedge about them, Father God. Lord, we pray for peace. This peace around the world, Father, that the gospel would go forth. And Father, we pray for our country. We pray for America. And Lord God, I pray for peace in the city of Jerusalem and the nation of Israel. These things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 It's been great to have you all on the show. Thank you so much. God bless you. You all go forth and do what God has called you to do. Thank you. God bless you. And until next Sunday morning, may the Lord bless you.